The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Martin. All right, folks. Welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. I am your host, Daryl Martin, and uh, make sure you do check us out any day, every day, even as you're traveling and want to keep up with the markets at tfnn.mobi. Let's check out where the markets are hanging out right now. We got the S&P is down five points. We got the NASDAQ is up a whole tick. We have the Russell down two points. We have the Dow down six. Gold's currently down 14 points. Got a decent little move down on gold there. We got silver is currently down about 1%. Uh, percent. Copper is down a quarter percent. Oil, pretty flat on the day uh, compared to yesterday's close. We're only down 16 cents. Natural gas also really quiet, only down about a quarter percent right now. We got corn up four points. We got soybeans up little over ten and a half. We got the euro dollars actually down only eight pips right now. Pound dollar down thirty five. Aussie dollar down forty four. We got the euro yen down fifty eight. The US yen down thirty five. The pound yen down a buck. So a uh, nice move there. We got the dollar CAD up twenty one. Dollar franc down four. So uh, in other words, we got a lot of quiet going on. We did have some moves. There were some moves, but now it's wait and see what's going to happen with the Fed. Right? So all eyes on the Fed. That's where the attention is going to be. And so we're going to be talking about trading at the Fed tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be looking at pre-Fed news trades and going into the Fed trades as well. So um, I look forward to that. Uh, definitely make sure you join us for that show to see, you know, what are some of the ways that I look to trade the Fed on Nadex. And I also am going to, you know, do some exploration trades, meaning... I'm going to show you some different ideas I have um, on ways to trade the Fed that are a little bit different than what I've taught before. Instead of simply your normal straddle or strangle or butterfly or whatever, <laughs> we're going to go into some other things that you can do. And also some important lessons for you if maybe you are more of a position trader, swing trader, and uh, you have certain positions on, like in gold or forex or indices, and you don't just want to close the trade because the Fed funds is coming out, but you don't want to, you know, get hammered. And at the same time, you don't really, you know, want to give up a potential large profit. So we're going to talk about how to do that um, when trading, you know, um, with Nadex. But also, again, even if you're just a futures forex trader, um, you can actually even do this if you're a stock trader on certain ETFs. Like, let's say you're trading the GLD or the Spiders. Um, a lot of traders didn't think about that, but you know the markets are going to be very, very correlated. Okay, and let me show you what I mean by correlation because I know some of y'all out there. I mean, you don't trade futures, you don't trade forex, and uh, you know you you just trade you know stocks or ETFs. And so I want to you know look at some of these correlations for you and show you how you can use this to your advantage. This is a little bit different topic, okay, than we do, you know, a lot of times. So we're going to go in, and let's say you trade, you know, the Dow. And the, you know, ETF that mirrors the Dow is IWM. All right? So, I'm uh, sorry, that's uh, Russell. <laughs> I need the diamonds. Diamonds, there we go. So, DIA. And uh, I do going to be for the Russell. So we'll check that one out also. And... Let's go in here. We'll put them on. And, of course, it'll look a little different just because the time frames that we have. But um, one of the things that I can do to make this line up a little better in Thinkorswim is I can go into my settings and I go to my equities and I can say, hey, don't show the extended hours. And I can do the same thing on my futures. Okay? And by doing that, that'll help the chart line up a little better for me um for like that pre and post market trading and again let me go in just make sure i had all the checks on there over there on the equities and it just uh, makes it when you're just scanning the chart to see the correlation there there we go style settings there we go and over to 
equities don't show the extended session. Okay. So now our charts are going to look, you know, a lot more similar. And then we just got to sort of make the zoom line up. Those little dashes right there being like new trading days. Okay. And make sure your time frames line up. And they'll, you know, they should be pretty close. Um, it's probably not going to be just perfect. Just, you know, just the way the markets move and correlate. Also, let's, uh, oh, one other thing. I need to get rid of my offset. I have an offset over here on the time access. So let's get rid of that. So just a couple thinkers swim lessons. We get that right there under time access or price access. So now I should really be able to line those up. See that? Now my day, you know, times are, you know, almost exactly on right there. And of course it's, you know, the arrows are winking the chart, so that compares it across. And we can go in and now we'll just we'll zoom into today. Okay? On both of these right here. Let's get one more bar in. There we go. Okay. So as you can see, the charts are pretty much identical. If they weren't, then you'd probably have a you know pretty decent um, arbitrage ability. Now, I'm not saying the price is identical. I'm just saying the chart. Okay, the most of the bar is going to look the same. You know, you got up bar, down bar, big down bar, little down bar, little down bar, little down bar. You know, finally get a little up bar, down bar, up bar. So the, the bars are basically the same. So once you understand that, that does help you a little bit. Because uh, there's some other things you can do to help out with this, too. There's one thing that's a little trick a lot of people don't know about is go in and if, let's say you're thinker swim. I think you can do this in Ninja. A lot of platforms you can do this. You just do a multiple. So let's say you do times 10. Okay. And, well, that's not big enough. So we can do, what if I do times 100? Now, what I've been able to accomplish is sort of bring that price to look a little more similar if I want to. So I can sort of see like what really is the difference in price. The bars are going to look the exact same. I just multiplied it times 100. The reason I did that was for the simple fact that what I wanted to do was go, okay, what is the difference between the Dow futures and the diamond Dow ETFs? Okay, And that difference should stay pretty close to the same number most of the day. Um, the reason for the difference is, of course, it's a future contract. It's saying, you know, hey, I'll buy or sell the Dow, you know, contract. Now it's all cash settled, but I'd buy or sell the Dow futures from you in March. This is an agreed upon date. So one thing has to be factored in, and that's you know interest and everything else, and of course dividends, right? So like dividends, you know, um, and I don't even know if the Dow has dividends, honestly. Um, I used to know all that, but I don't trade ETFs that much anymore. But I would still want to show you. Because it's the same thing to me. I just get better leverage. But anyway, so I wanted you to look at the difference. So we got 15,874 minus 15,809. Okay, so we got 65 points. And just to see, you know, how well this winds up. I'm literally doing this. I haven't done pre-homework on this. I'm just doing this on the air with you. Okay. We'll just go over here to this, you know, big bar right here. We got close, 15,873. That's about the same price. Let's go to one higher. Okay, hi, 15904. All right, so 15904. And same bar right there, minus the high. That one's 15841. So 63, okay? So, you know, that was at 10 o'clock this morning right here, you know, around 115. There's like 65 points difference. So there's only like a couple points difference right there. The reason I bring this up is maybe you have a position on the diamonds. Or maybe you have a position on GLD or the spiders or IWM. Now, I won't help you as much on the Qs because the Qs don't use the same formula as the NASDAQ 100. But for those four ETFs, and I'm sure there's a few more we could dig into as well, but at least for those four ETFs right there, you could use the strategy. And what's the strategy I'm talking about? You could actually hedge with Nadex. Now, your first response may be, well, you know what? I can just hop on over here to Thinkorswim, and I can pull up my account. And once I do that, I can simply, you know, I can do any trade I want. I don't need to hedge, right? I can just go over here, and if I want to hedge, I can, you know, hedge really easily. Let's see if we can get some of these shrunken out of the way. Um, whatever. Uh, we'll just go right here. So diamonds. And, you know, I got all these options. I got weekly options. You know, I got options that are expiring in three days. They got, they got options expiring every single week. 
So I can just hedge right over here. Well, if you do hedge, you're going to pay, let's just say, an at the money today. Okay? An at the money put, or as close as we can get. We're at one, what, 58.60, 158.70 right now. So I can go and I could buy, you know, one of these puts right here. And look at that. So that's one of the ways I can do it. But there's an issue. And that issue is let's look at what kind of hedge you're really getting. Okay? Remember, this option doesn't expire for three more days. So I'm paying for three days of time decay. So that needs to be considered. You're putting up more money. And my delta on this 159 right here, okay, is 56, which means for the next dollar move, and this is what delta means, if you ever wondered, what is a delta? Because uh, there's these five Greeks, you know, and what does delta mean? Well, delta means how much money will the price of the option increase or decrease in value based on a one point, okay, a one point, one dollar move in the underlying. And so I can go over here, and they even have a uh, pretty cool little theoretical price model. I can say, what would happen, just to see if we're right, if it moved up a dollar. If the delta is, you know, 53 or whatever, then my new theoretical price over here, let's see, should be, let's see, if it went up a dollar and I bought a put, then I would should lose 50 cents. And a dollar 44 minus 50, it says, yeah, right about 85 cents is what that'd be worth. So that's accurate. That's actually what the delta is. So if I said, hey, what if it went down a dollar? Then I should make about 50 cents. So dollar 43 plus 50 cents puts you right at you know dollar 93, dollar 95. So that's completely accurate. That's the delta. Well, what's the problem with that? Well, if the market moves against you, and you got that put on, let's say it just moves a dollar, then you're only getting 50 cents of protection for every dollar going against you. So you're losing 50 cents. Okay, instead of losing a dollar, which is you know 50 cents is better than a dollar, but you're losing that full amount. So that's one thing to highly consider. Um, and then, of course, you can go and we can get even more detailed. We can go into the gamma. Okay, so what is gamma? Gamma is how much does the delta change with a $1 move in the underlying? So on gamma, so 56 plus 21, okay, so 56 plus 21 means that my delta, if the Diamonds were to move down one point should be about 77, or I guess negative 77, really, So because it's a put. And so you can see right on here, that's going to put us right at negative 75. So we're you know pretty much right on that on the gamma. And you know, the difference being part of it, just the price that we're at, we're not right at 159. So I'll keep going on this lesson, but I want you to learn there's a very cool way to apply Nadex to even ETF trading. Stay right there. We'll be back after this break. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. All right, folks, welcome back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And so we're just going through and we're just talking about sort of, you know, how to apply this, or maybe even even to show you why you might want to consider something other than ETFs. Um, but uh, one of the big things is I'm just wanting to go through and really just lay this out for you piece by piece so that way you fully understand, you know, the potential uh, benefits over here. Um, also, this actually just brought to light a very important point that I like to show traders. Um, what's this, okay? This will be something you may may or may not have ever seen before but it's uh, something that's very very important that you do understand and um, every once in a while okay so I want to check them and see every once in a while the colors are off depending upon your bar alright so if you go through these and you'll see like, okay, all these candles all that but what you can do is, watch this, we'll go over here and we'll just load the diamonds back up at the bottom just so you can see this and see exactly what I'm talking about. But this is actually why a lot of times when you see my charts, you won't see colors on the charts. And I know uh, people sort of tend to like the colors. Um, I think it honestly feeds the gambling mentality. So I was taught to not use colors on my charts whenever possible. Um, but watch this, we're going to go over, and I've seen this happen on candles, I've seen it happen on bars. Um, and I want to see if we can get this to to mess up. 
<laughs> because the reason I like this is because like it, it shows a really good lesson where people will go in and they'll just trust the color on the bar. So right there, there's our 830 bar. Okay. And then let's make sure we got the 830 bar on here. Okay. Notice anything? Throw the candle on there. See if you notice it. I'm going to give you one second here. We're going to go back over to the bar. Look at this bar right here. And I know there's some logical reason they try to explain, but bottom line, when you're looking at the color, you're not thinking about the logical reason. This is a green bar. But look, it opened at 15,927 and it dropped to 15, you know, 896. So there can be just some weird anomalies depending upon the bar, the data that was before it. You know, if we go back in and pull it up now, look at it. You know, it's it's sort of like it's a weird thing. Now, notice we have this data now. If we go in and we change the information, we go, okay, well, maybe I want to hide that data. Then it could literally, you know, change this bar too. Look at that. Just by hiding that data, it changed the color of the bar. So I have a green bar, and sometimes I'll see green candles that were really down candles and red candles that were really up candles. So when I'm trading, what I was taught to do is there's two benefits. One, using bars, open, high, low, close bars, you can fit more of them on a screen. <laughs> two, it removes the emotion if you'll just make them a solid color. I don't care if you want to make them all green, all blue, orange, yellow, purple, pink, black, whatever you know floats your boat. But if you want to get the accuracy and remove the emotion, one of the best moves that I was taught, that I teach traders that I work with, is to get rid of the colors. You know, um, you know, on my charts, I mean, my bars are gold, right? I like I like gold, <laughs> so I use gold. I don't use any other color, just gold, right there on my charts. And um, anyways, so anyways, that's a completely side note, but it's one of those really important things that a lot of times nobody will ever teach you. And so I want to make sure that you were aware that that can happen on your chart. So if you're totally trusting the color, you're always better off with a bar chart than a candle chart simply because at least I can verify that that was a down close bar, even though it's showing up green. Okay? So <laughs> going to that bar will do you a lot of things, Steve, if you've had a bad day in the market. Yeah, it's a whole different kind of bar. And um, anyways, be aware of that and don't just trust the color of the candle. Okay? So if you are gonna if you do want the colors, use bar charts. I prefer not to use them at all. But anyways, people love seeing them, so I'll throw them up there, but I want you to know you should always be aware. It can be wrong. Um so right there we got the uh, diamonds times hundred, we'll get back on over here to YM. What are we on? We are on March two thousand four teen. <laughs> Gotta get used to saying that. And I'm um, coming up real soon. And let's see here. Now let's zoom on back in. Okay. Get right back on topic. We'll get this covered before the show's over. And I'm going to notice a few things. We're going to talk about what is the point value of the diamonds, what's the point value of the Dow, and then how could we potentially use Nadex spreads? Let's say if you're long the diamonds, how could you use Nadex spreads to hedge your ETF position? All right. Stay right there. We'll be right back after this break. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. With over three decades of trading experience, Andy Hecht brings a tremendous amount of knowledge and expertise to each weekly issue of his newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report. The Technomental Commodity Report gives you Andy's unique technomental analysis of the commodities market, a combination of technicals and fundamental analysis which he has developed and perfected over his many years of trading. The Technomental Commodity Report is only $49 a month, and right now you can get a full month-long trial subscription while paying absolutely nothing. See for yourself the kind of weekly report Andy delivers to his subscribers every Thursday morning. You'll receive specific stock, ETF, and option trades based on Andy's analysis, so no futures account is required. For all the details and to start your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, visit TFNN.com today. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks. Welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. So one thing I was going through is going, okay, what is the value of a Dow future? So the easiest way to find that is to simply look at the current price of the Dow, which is currently quoting at 15,811, and multiply it times the tick value as listed over on CME's website. So $5 tick value, okay? So we take that, we multiply it times five, and that's a $79,000 value, okay? So that's what one Dow future contract is worth. So what if we wanted to go over and go, well, how much, you know, what would that take? How many shares would you have to buy over on the diamonds? Okay. Well, if they're currently quoting at, if we take 79,000, 55, and we'll just divide it by 158.76. Not an exact science, but, you know, just to get the idea here. It would take about 500 shares of the Dow, or the, sorry, of the diamonds to equal one futures contract. Okay, so take 500 to equal one futures contract. And uh, so if you were going to put on a trade like that, let's see here, let's just say we went in, so we were interested in buying the diamonds, and we wanted to buy, say, 500 of them, then you'd be looking at uh, about 79 grand, obviously, so go, if it's equalized out, that you'd have to put up to be able to do the trade. 
Okay? So about say nine thousand dollars right there. Now let's let's go ahead and take this over to Nadex. Okay? Now one of the reasons maybe you don't trade the futures is you don't like that massive leverage. Maybe that's your reason. Okay? Um you like to hold longer and you don't want to worry about big moves overnight or you know, whatever. But I mean you still have to worry about big moves in the day, like when FOMC announcements come out. So let's look over at these Nadex spreads over here at the Dow. So we have the Wall Street 30, which follows the Dow March contract. And again, remember at the beginning of the radio show, I showed you how that difference is going to be pretty consistent throughout the day, like 62, 63 points. So you can basically ignore, it sounds funny, but you can ignore the difference in a one-day time frame between the Dow futures and the diamonds as far as you know, equalizing them off. So if one moves down a point, the other one's going to move down a point. It's just they're always going to be 62 points away <laughs> today, Okay. So they'll, they'll move in lockstep. Otherwise, there'd be just you know massive arbitrage money, and that's why it, there's not it's not there because arbitragers are making the market efficient by driving the prices to equalization constantly. Um, but so if we go over here and let's say you were long the Dow, you're like, hey, they're gonna pump this thing to infinity and beyond, and I don't want to let go of my position, man. But what, what if they release some stupid surprise? Uh, what if they say something on the press conference that totally nails my position? What if to be safe, I put in a stop loss, but then, you know, it goes against me. But then, like, you know, all of a sudden, the next statement in the press conference, it flies back up and the Dow flies up, you know, 50 points or whatever. How do I protect my, either my Dow future, uh, maybe my Wall Street 30 spread, or my, my Diamond ETF? Okay, so today we're going to focus on the Diamond ETF in particular. Now, remember I said it took 500, approximately 500 Diamond shares to equal one Dow future. Okay? So let's take this over to Nadex. And uh, so it's a little, you know, it's a little advanced. I haven't really taught this before. But if we go and we take the Dow and we futures to Nadex spreads, it'd be five Nadex spreads. Because on the Dow, every tick is worth five bucks. On Nadex, every tick is worth one dollar. So therefore, it take five Nadex spreads to make five dollars for a one point move, right? Because you need five of them at a dollar a piece to make five bucks every time it moves, you know, a point. Just like the Dow, it moves one point, it makes five bucks. So, now let's extract this one more step further. You know, and you might have to listen to this show again, but I hope you're picking some of this up. If you go in, and if I go, okay, well, if I know it takes five Nadex spreads to equal one Dow future, and I know it takes 500 diamond shares to equal one Dow future, then how many diamond shares? <laughs> you know, look at this. How many diamond shares does it take to equal? Okay, how many diamond shares does it take to equal one spread? Okay, one hundred. Remember, because it, it takes five net spreads to equal one Dow, and it takes five hundred shares to equal one Dow future then that would mean it would take 100 shares to equal one Nadex spread. So let's say you have 100 shares. Pretty common you know, size to trade when you're trading, you know, in ETFs and things like that. You could then hedge 100 contracts, or 100, sorry, 100 shares of Dow or Diamonds with one Nadex spread. And a little trick when you're doing what's called a hedge. Okay, when you're doing a hedge, usually your risk, and this is sort of what it would look like on a risk reward graph. It'd look like that. Okay, um, but when you're doing this type of contract, let's see if I can even get the master. I'll get rid of all the filters on there. There we go. We'll get the big master buy contract, and then we'll throw on, say, a, a hedge on here. That's what it sort of look like. So basically, your head, now you're only hedged to a certain point, okay, to the floor of that spread. But let's say we bought the Dow, and I'm just using the master spread as sort of a replacement for buying 100 diamond shares, okay, just to show you the P&L graph. So, I mean, it can make money up, and it can make money, or it can lose money down. We want to hedge some of that downside. And again, our main concern here is, hey, if it does fly up, now this is the goal, okay, if it does fly up, I want to build in, ideally enjoy some of that profit. The biggest thing is I don't want to get stopped out if it goes down and then flies back, which we should often expect on a Fed funds rate. 
And I do want to hedge my position, and I don't want to close it. Okay? So if I bought 100 diamond shares, I'd simply have to sell one Nadex spread. And, again, I'll go over in a second why this is better than doing diamond options. I can do one Nadex spread, and there's a trick on the Nadex spreads. Right here, if you're doing what's called a hedge strategy, I talked about this, um, I want to say earlier this week, even last week, but you can mix two columns. If you can switch them, the titles, and it uh, makes it really, really simple. So if I go in and basically say right here, my break-even distance, that's how far the spread would have to move to be at break-even at expiration. Well, if I'm hedging, my break-even distance becomes my risk. Because my break-even distance is the difference between where I'm selling the spread and buying the underlying market. Okay, it's just between the difference between buying and selling. So if I'm hedging, my break-even distance is my risk. Okay? And my risk is now my break-even distance. So this is just for hedging. This is think of it, this is no different than doing a married put. Okay, where you buy a put to hedge a stock. Okay? But there's a massive edge on doing it on Nadex versus doing it on normal, you know, put options. So we got one of them, which is sort of nice because, you know, if you did one diamond option, then, you know, that also would be, um, you know, beneficial to you. Like you'd be put, you have to do 100 contracts for one diamond option. And so we got that up. And now let me go over here. I'm going to pull this up. And I want to put the two pieces together for you. And then all of a sudden, it sort, of, it sort of starts to make sense after you look at it a couple times. But the first thing is to remember your ratio. Okay, again, your ratio is very, very important. And then we need to, you know, compare. Okay? If we were to go in and do this, you know, what would this cost us? Okay? So, right here we got a, if our, if our number one goal is decreasing risk, and we're like, hey, you know what, if I could just limit my risk to, you know, basically six bucks, on the Fed funds rate, but keep my position. If the thing takes off, I could make some money. You know, maybe I think it'll be a one or two hundred point Dow move day. Then I can choose this spread right here. It'll hedge me down two hundred forty-eight points or a twenty-four point drop in the diamonds. Okay, so it'll hedge me way down in the diamonds. I'm a great hedge. Uh, now for the first like, you know, five dollars fifty points, I won't make anything. And I'm using the 4.15 because the announcement comes out, you know, say at 2, and then the press conference comes out at 2.30. So I need to let this thing hedge me all the way through that, okay? And um, so 2.30 is the press conference. And then 2 o'clock will be the interest rate. Uh, so I want to make sure that my expiration time, my 4.15 time, is after that. Now, if I'm going, you know, I'll take a little more risk, but I want to be able to really capture that upside of the thing flies, then I can look at this contract. That would give me a 20 tick, $20 risk. Um, but I only have to move up 17 ticks. I'd be break even at that point. Then if the thing moves 200 points, I can I can make more money on this one. But I'm risking another you know a little bit more cash. So how do we compare these? Well, if you wanted to hedge 100 shares of the diamonds, you'd need to buy a put contract, right? So one put option contract would equal, okay, one put option contract would equal for you. A hedge for 100 shares because every contract is 100. So I'm going to add this over to the analyzer on Thinkorswim, and then we're going to go over. And now we got to we want to compare apples for apples here, okay? And so if we're selling, we want to basically say what like that ceiling is the put strike, okay? So the ceiling is the put strike. So like I'd want to find a Basically a 158.50 diamond um, put strike. So let's go over here. Let's find that. And um, let's see. We'll uh, do right here. So we'll buy this one. And we only need one of them. Okay, because it's going to give us 100 options to you know cover 100 shares. And the cost on that is going to cost us $121. Okay. The cost, and that's, again, because we're paying for a lot of premium. The cost on either one of these, 48 bucks or 16 bucks. So now if I com combine this, let me see here. I'm going to go in and combine this on. And add it in there for you. So one second. 
do analyze duplicate trade, add that on. And this sort of gives me an idea of the hedge and where it kicks in and what I can lose and everything else on the trade. You know, I can basically, I can lose up to 135 bucks on this trade up to expiration. Okay? Which basically means I can lose the difference between where I bought the stock and the strike of the put. So plus, you know, any premium that's built in there. So there, there is a bit of risk that I'm taking on in this process. So the buck 21 plus the difference there is the risk I'm taking on. I'm taking on more risk. I'm getting less of a hedge. Okay. So what I want, the big thing like I said that I want you to really see is I'm going to put up more money. And remember when I was over here and we were looking at this, um, and we were checking out the option chain, like the 158.50, and we looked over here at, well, what about the options right here? I got 158.50. I only have a 50 delta. So for every dollar move, I'm only getting, you know, 50 cents of my money back, okay, like insurance. And, yeah, that number does grow as it goes further and further and further, but, I mean, it'd have to move pretty far for me to even get close to a delta of one. Why? Because the thing doesn't expire for, you know, several days. Whereas over on Nadex, I can get, Minimum premium payout, minimum theta. I can get maximum gel delta driving my del my maximum gamma driving my delta through the roof, so I get the largest possible um, protection for actually the smallest price. Okay, so you know it's, it's it's an interesting concept, but basically it's just it's one contract, and I mean you can demo this or whatever if you want to. Maybe hop on if you have a Thicker Swim or Ninja account or whatever, and go into demo. And just throw on, like, buy 100 shares on the diamonds. Again, I'm talking demo. I just want you to see how it works, okay? And then sell um, a spread just to hedge it and, you know, see how the, the whole thing plays out. But the biggest thing this will help you do is just see, you know, you could use one spread to hedge out 100 shares of diamonds. And it just, it, it's, it's simple. Oh, and by the way, you know, the, you're not paying that much. It's 90 cents a contract. So, uh, you know, really low, you know, that's commission fee, everything all in. So that you might even, depending upon what your rates are, uh, you may even be saving money on that as well. So that could be another uh, benefit for you. Um, and, you know, if it goes down, it gets to its maximum point, you know, you need to close it out. So just be aware of that. I mean, obviously, this is, this is not, this is more like a spread with a one, delta of one. So if it does get down, if the market flies all the way down, which would be pretty big, but if it flies all the way down to 15550, you need to be hopping out of this spread. <laughs> um, and, you know, taking your profit and maybe finding a lower spread to add on or just belling on your diamond contracts or whatever. Understand, this will only hedge you down to the floor of the spread. But uh, a little bit different. Uh, you can also apply this same concept. Okay, over here. Show you this. Um, and we can look at, you know, we got GLD. We got, you know, GC, and, you know, uh, yeah, understanding cost basis, all that stuff, that's an important thing, but as far as understanding, like, a one day, the difference between the two, that difference usually is not going to change that significantly within that day. So the head should um, be able to take care of for you. Even if the difference does change, usually that interest rate piece, that component of row, is going to be built into the pricing of the option and compensate for that. So uh, stay right there. We'll look over at maybe a couple other ones like, uh, you know, GLD, maybe the Spiders, maybe IWM. We'll see how many we can get through. Stay right there. We'll be right back after this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary perspective contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Have you subscribed to The Gold Report yet? On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.69% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this powerful newsletter first began. And right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Gold Report by visiting TFNN.com. Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market makes its way back into positive territory after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial today by visiting TFNN.com. Join David White as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, so here we are. So we're going to go ahead and check out now just uh, looking at, you know, GLD. And I'm um, seeing if you can do a similar thing on this. And the easiest way to see if it really will work we want to check these ETFs out. Okay, one of the biggest tips I can tips I can give you here is to go in and really try to compare the charts and see if they're moving, you know, very much in lockstep. Okay, so and there's two ways to do that. One, just look at them, okay, visually. Two, to double check it. Do the same thing I did earlier in the show. Go in and measure, say, like the current price right now, one one eight point five five. Um, then we go, you know, minus. Now, there's a hundred ways to do this. Let's go let's multiply this times 10 real quick. We'll make it easier. So, 11.85. Okay. So, we can do, you know, 11. Get back over here. 11.85.3 minus 12.28. So, we got 42 point difference. Now, let's go compare a similar time frame. Okay. So we'll go, say, to this uh, big high breakout bar right here. We'll say the second bar here, high of the day. What do we got? We got a high of 1242.5. Click on that. And a high of, I mean, I know the answer to this, but I just want to help you all see it and walk through it how I know. 43.5. Okay, so we're basically looking at the same difference 
for today. Okay? Uh, meaning, like, beginning of the day, currently, during the day, this is, you know, we're, it's basically going to have that same difference, that same basis difference there. Interest is in storage being built into the futures, all that. Okay? So, since we know that, then we know, okay, we could actually hedge this with another contract. Now, what is each contract worth? Well, gold, if we go in 12.28, okay, um, 0.2, you know, I guess you could divide that by ticks if you wanted to. Um, I think it'd be easier for us just to go in and say 12.28 times, and then it's $100, because it's $10 per dime. It ticks in dimes, it goes 10, 20, 30. So, times $100. $122,000 is what it's amazing. I can't believe it's 190000 earlier this year. So $122,000 is what one gold future contract is worth. So the GLD being quoted at 118.5 or so right now. So we got to go and we got to take 122800 divided by, we'll say, 118.5. Puts us basically at about 1,000 gold um, contracts to one gold future. All right, so now we do the exact same process we just did. Really simple. So you go, okay, well, what if we were looking over at the spreads? If we know it's 1,000 to 1, okay, over on the spreads, go in here, we'll just choose gold. So right there, of course, it's closed right now. But, uh, and this, obviously, would probably not be one that you'd do right on the Fed funds rate because gold uh, spreads do close at 130, but it's still something you can use for gold ETFs. Um, so you go in there, and it's going to be 10 to 1. So I know, okay, well, that means we basically have the exact same ratio um, where we can go in and I don't know if that messed up the camera there or not whenever I got to let that window shake. But um, anyway, so right there, let me pull this notepad back on. There we go. I guess it's going to mean 100 gold okay, um, contracts or 100 GLD shares to one Nadex spread. Okay? So that means you could hedge GLD with that. You can go through and do the same thing with IWM for the small cap 2000. Uh, you can also do the same thing with the spiders for the US 500 spreads. So, and basically you're looking at a, you know, 1 to 100 ratio on all of them. All right, we all have a great day. Let me know if you have any questions on that, and I'll see you tomorrow. I believe that we're all here to contribute something unique and that deep within us lies a special gift, a special talent, our own bit of genius just waiting to be tapped into. When it comes to trading and investing, I can help you tap into yours. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN, and on Thursday, December 19th, I'm hosting a one-hour workshop where I'll share with you my most incredible discovery yet, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator. I developed this tool with one outcome in mind, to do what nobody else considered possible, to put the power of the most advanced indicator, scanner, and trading strategy in the hands of people just like you and me. I can promise you this, you'll never look at a chart the same way again. This event is available to all subscribers to my newsletter service, Mastering Probability, which for the holidays is available free for the next 30 days. No charge whatsoever to new subscribers and no obligation on your part. Please join me by going to the homepage of TFNN.com to sign up for this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity.